Hello and welcome back to Football League World TV. I'm Marcus Ali and joining me today for the Plymouth Argyle fan debate show is Tom Sleeman. Tom, how are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. So good to be here. Excellent stuff. Thanks for coming on, Tom. Um, today we're going to be assessing the first three weeks of the January transfer window at Plymouth Argyle. But before getting into it, I'm going to ask you to please do like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But Without further ado, let's get into the show. So we're going to kick off with the two incomings at Home Park in the opening three weeks of the transfer window. One well, of the most exciting ones, I think, would have to be Ramoni Critchlow coming in from Huddersfield Town. It's his fifth loan spell away from the Terriers. Um, he spent the first half of the season on loan at Swindon Town, looking fairly assured um, in with the League Two promotion chasers. One thing that maybe stuck out uh, for me, Tom, was, was that there hasn't been too much competition for places at Plymouth in the start of the season. It has been quite a sort of a regimented back three that Ryan Lowe and now Stephen Schumacher have, have stuck to. Um, what were your initial thoughts when Critchley came in? Only 22 years old, of course. I mean, obviously, it's quite it's quite a good look. Obviously, he's had the first half of the season on loan at uh, Swindon. He's done well. And obviously, Huddersfield themselves think that he's able to make that step up to League One now. I mean, he played against us last season in the FA Cup and uh, scored against us in a 3-2 win when we progress to the next round. Um, this season, there hasn't been a huge amount of uh, competition for places like you say. I mean, a lot of that's down to the injury we've had with James Bolton. We signed him in the summer from Portsmouth. And again, he's only played the last two games against uh, Birmingham and Sheffield Wednesday. Against Birmingham, he looked quite calm and composed like we, and, a, and a player we'd missed, basically. But then against uh, Sheffield Wednesday at the weekend, it was quite obvious that that time out time out of the team that time out of football had done him some harm so with Critchlow coming in it, competition for places will be certainly fantastic for the season going ahead especially with uh, Critchlow's style as well as a ball playing centre back that's exactly what Ryan Lowe and now obviously Stephen Schumacher are trying to implement at the club. Absolutely yeah it does seem like there has been a, a clear direction and an identity at Argyle with the way that they've like um, liked to recruit players particularly in the summer transfer window and just gone and obviously a nice progression from playing at a team sort of pushing for promotion in league two moving um, to, to Plymouth and, and pushing for promotion there as well of course. Do you expect him to get a lot of playing time or will it be mainly from the fringes maybe coming in for the odd midweek match or can you see Critchlow really establishing himself in the coming months? I think he'll certainly get an opportunity to impose himself on this side, but it depends whether he takes that chance or not. A lot of the um, Swindon fans have been saying that he was a really good, solid player for them, but then wasn't quite the same after he suffered, suffered an ankle injury back in, I think it was November. So I think a lot of it will depend on his own form, how well he does, and then the form, obviously, of the other players around him. Because after conceding four goals against Sheffield Wednesday, if something similar happens this weekend it's quite possible he could get thrust straight into the team for the next game. Uh, I believe he played a behind-closed-doors friendly against Torquay this week. And from what Stephen Schumacher said, he said he did really well in that game. So it's, po it's positive going forward for sure. Certainly a positive then. Um, if we've got any Argyle fans watching live, please do get involved in the comments sections. Any questions for myself or Tom will, will be uh, sure to try and get you involved. But moving on to the, the second edition at Home Park, and that's Alfie Lewis. A uh, versatile midfielder, West Ham United Youth um, Academy graduate, comes in from St. Patrick's Athletic, which is not a background that I, I can't say I'm too familiar with, but at just 22 years old, central midfield could possibly be one for the future, would you say? Certainly. I mean, obviously, Argyle quite like bringing in their younger players and kind of blooding them and giving them that chance to do well. I mean, he's um, from what I've seen of him, he looks a little similar to uh, Panucci Kamara in that kind of box-to-box. -box. Has a goal in him kind of, uh, kind of mould. I think the nickname he got out in Ireland was the uh, Cockney Perlo, is what they called him, apparently. But um, again, like uh, Critchlow, he got 60 minutes against Torquay on... Uh, couple of days ago and apparently he did quite well in that game I mean again like Critchlow he's not played not made not played any minutes yet apart from coming on in the last minute against Birmingham the other week but it'll certainly be interesting to see if he manages to force his way into that side and fulfill a lot of the potential that uh, the Irish fans seem to see in him 
Absolutely. That's very high praise then comparing him to, to Panache Kamara, if he can have anything like the impact um, that the Guinea-Bissau internationals had this season. I'm sure it'll be an excellent piece of business. Just moving on to one outgoing um, this month, and Kieran Agard has moved on from Plymouth and has ended up signing for uh, Doncaster Rovers. Agard has only scored one goal this season after signing in September for the Pilgrims, but he was very regularly involved in the squad, sometimes on the bench, not coming on for very long, very often. But do you feel like it, it was um, a position in the squad that definitely could have been utilised going into the second half of the season? Or were you on the, the flip side, maybe not not too fussed to see him move on? I think it was a move that made sense of both parties, to be honest. I mean, ironically, his most of his game time came towards the end of his spell at the club. But I think that 32 years old, he wants to be playing every single week, week in, week out. And at a club slightly lower down the division and lacking a goal scorer like Doncaster are, he may well fare better there. I mean, he um, scored the winner against Charlton uh, not so long ago. And despite coming off the bench nearly every game, he still did manage three for us in all competitions. I think he scored uh, two in the cup competitions as well. But um, like you say, I think at, at the end of the day, with Jepcott, we've got Hardy and um, all that up top already. It's it's quite obvious he's not going to want to play fifth fiddle, as it were. And then it's possible that Argyll could look to get another striker in, make perhaps a younger, hungrier kind of player who wants to prove themselves to fill that kind of role that Agar was playing. Absolutely, yeah. As we've touched on, the recruitment policy has been pretty consistent at Plymouth in, in years gone by. So if they can fill that hole... Uh, where a 32-year-old was with maybe a player with a little bit more potential. I'm, I'm sure they'll get involved with that um, that, that type of, of decision. Um, just moving on, we're going to talk about some potential situations with, with current players in the squad. So first up, there's an interesting sort of scenario developing with, with Ryan Broom. Um, he's been a little bit more in and out of the side at Plymouth in, in the last few months than maybe he was in the uh, sort of initial period of the season under Ryan Lowe. Um, Peter uh, con reportedly considering recalling uh, the, the 25-year-old midfielder, Barry Fryers, has, has mentioned that with the chance that they would try and move him on on a permanent basis. However, Argyle do have uh, some kind of clause or agreement where they would be able to match any potential fee that Peterborough agree uh, with, with a new suitor um, to try and lure him to, to home park on a permanent basis. Where do you stand on, on this one, Tom? Obviously, it would probably be a, a bit of a blow to, to lose Broom to a recall. Are uh, you more, more on the case that um, you, know, you, know, you need him in the second half of the season to, to, to carry on pushing towards those playoff places? I feel like I'm probably in the minority when I say it, but I wouldn't be overly fast if Broom were to go back to Peterborough. Uh, at the, when he when he first joined the club, he was absolutely fantastic. He ran games and he brought that extra 10% out of the other players around him. But in the last couple of months, he's fallen out of favour. He's had COVID and hasn't quite impressed in the way that he did originally. A lot of, the, uh, a lot of his style of play is exactly the same that we already have in Danny Mayer. Obviously, Danny Mayer being that little bit older and probably that little bit less consistent, largely. But I think that if Argyle were to try and match what um, any other club playing for Ryan Broom, so you're probably looking somewhere in the region of three hundred to 500000 at least, I don't necessarily think it's worth the club investing that kind of money. Fair enough. I think, yeah, maybe a little bit in the minority there. I suppose his highlight reel this season would, would be extremely um, sort of eye-catching, but having seen him as as regularly as, as you have done, you know, you're, you're in great positions to pass that judgment. And yeah, a fee in, in that sort of region would be a little bit of a surprise to, to see Plymouth um, stake out for. But moving on to another player, and this is more of a, a positive story, maybe, um, Brendan Galloway despite being injured for what looks like the rest of the season, has signed a contract extension until the end of next term with Plymouth Argyle. Obviously, Galloway has had a very high-profile sort of youth career playing in the Premier League, has now got a handful of EFL clubs on his CV. Were you, for one, um, pleased to see the news that he's, he's going to be staying until at least the summer of 2023? It's absolutely fantastic news, to be honest with you. I mean, in Galloway, we've effectively signed a championship-level player that's the only reason he's not playing in the championship is because of his injury record. I mean, noticeably, when he's in the team, they look that little bit more energetic. They look that little bit more composed at the back. And I think since he's not been in the sides, it's been a bit telling that oh, we've 
we've kept less clean sheets, obviously four goals at um, Sheffield Wednesday last weekend. And just before Ryan Lowe left, we had a couple of games in a row where we were conceding two or three as well. So once he's back in the team, I think that'll be a massive lift in the middle, in the middle of that back three. I mean, um, Gillespie's come in in his place and he's been a bit hit and miss as well. And I feel that Galloway was a lot more consistent in that, in that sense. So when he does come back in next season, whenever that might be, it'll be a fantastic lift for the side. Excellent. Yeah, certainly a, a very strong piece of business to get him to, to commit his short term future, albeit um, at least now uh, to Argyle. Um, afterwards, uh, after this uh, little transition, we're going to be talking about where else Plymouth could strengthen in the remainder of the window. So, Tom, if, if you're Steve Schumacher uh, going into the last 10 days of the window, where are you looking to, to strengthen in particular? I think probably the priority at the moment is going to be that kind of left wing back position. I think with um, Connor Grant's obviously the nailed in option in that area, and he's been absolutely phenomenal once again this season. But with the news that George Cooper is going to be out for the rest of the season now, I think it's quite possible we're going to need a little bit of cover in that position. Um, obviously, with Ryan Lowe who was in charge, uh, he had this habit of bringing in kind of these attacking players like Cooper, like Garrick, and quite often playing them at that in that like, kind of wing back role. That I think we might it might be possible that the club need to bring in someone who's an out and out kind of regular in that position. I mean, Connor Grant that used to be a central midfielder and he was brought back there. George Cooper was an attacking midfielder and he was brought back into that position. So I think for the season going ahead, just in case something does happen to Connor Grant, it's quite possible that the club may need to invest in that kind of position. I mean, I'd, I'd take a look at uh, another forward as well, perhaps, but we're quite doing quite well in that department as it is. But I think it's quite possible that Schumacher will look to bring in that fifth forward just for that little bit of reassurance in that position. Because as we know, at this level, one or two injuries and suddenly the results going against you. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that would lead to, to uh, a very strong and, and nicely assembled squad going in uh, sort of building towards that business end of the season. There's a lot of players um and clubs, as you rightly mentioned, sort of squeezing round pegs into, uh, what's, the, what's the phrase, square pegs into round holes uh, with players playing sort of left wing back or, or right wing back, given it, it not really being the natural role that suits them, Plymouth being a club that have been doing it. Another side in and around Plymouth in the table been doing that has been Milton Keynes, Dons, and the playoff race is really hotting up. Um, at the moment, we have seen our goal flirt with the automatic promotion places at times this season as well. Um, just wanted to get your, your final thoughts, Tom, on, on how it's shaping up, how important these last 10 days of the window could be and whether our guy, our guy are going to get on the right side of what could be some very fine margins to finish in the playoffs this season. I think if you were to offer any Argyle fan a position in, the, in that playoff uh, mix right now, they would absolutely bite your hand off. I think we've massively overachieved on the budget that we've got this season. And you take a look at the other sides around us, you've got your Sunderlands and and uh, Sheffield Wednesdays and all that, and they're playing out tens of thousands a week for a number of their players. You've got your Barry Bannon and all that kind, kind of stuff in the mix. So for little old Plymouth Argyle to be in that mix with those kind of sides is absolutely massive for us. Um, whether we'll finish there or not is another thing completely, but uh, it's certainly going to be an interesting last 10, 15 games of the season to see where we do end up. But after last season's finish, I think it's massive for the club that they're pushing forward in the direction they are. I think a lot of our fans believe that if the season was another sort of four or five games longer last season, we'd been playing football in League Two. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Well, I think I think Schumacher will definitely maybe use that underdog mentality going into the final stretch. But yeah, definitely in and around the, the teams that they have compared to their budget, it's, it's been a cracking start and a good platform for Argyle to build on. So that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you very much for giving up your time and joining me, Tom. I've, I've really enjoyed your insight this afternoon. Thank you very much. Anytime. Excellent stuff. So all that remains is to look ahead on Football League World TV at 4pm, just over 15 minutes time. We've got the weekend preview that will be hosted by Alfie Burns. Joining him is Adam Jones and Ben Wignall. So make sure to stay tuned for that. Please drop a like on the video, subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.